11.03 p.m. on Wednesday, February 17th, 2016. Diane, please take a vote. Karen is running late. Carolyn? Here. Jeanette? Here. Barbara? Here. Betty? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. Okay, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody in this wonderful February. Um, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of January 20th, 2016. And do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? Motion. Oh. Okay, motion to approve the minutes. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, you can just take a roll, Carolyn? Um, Carolyn? Yes. Okay. Barbara? Yes. Patty? Yeah. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Um, are there any public comments this evening? Okay, no public comments. Um, next item on the agenda is Treasury Report. Greg, please. Okay, um, let me get to uh, page uh, eight. Um, uh, before I start, I want to uh, highlight that the, uh, uh, the financials have changed the uh, format slightly uh, so that the fit on a uh, uh, portrait uh, orientation as opposed to a landscape. And, um, I've eliminated uh, two out of the three uh, looks at the income statement, but all of the uh, relevant information is contained on the consolidated income statement that starts on, uh, on page 10. Uh, if you have any uh, comments on the format after, after the report, I'd be happy to entertain them. But uh, getting back to uh, this month's uh, performance, Revenue for the month was uh, more than the budget expectations by 27,000 and the short of year-to-date expectations by 25,000 or 0.9 percent. And of course, we expect to catch up on budget expectations throughout the year. Uh, salaries for the month are uh, 9,700 below budget estimates and under uh, for the month and under budget 105, uh, $105,000 for the year. Library materials for the month are 35,000, almost 36,000 under budget, and $27,000 under budget uh, for the year. Uh, again, um, uh, it's due to the annual subscription fees uh, offset by slower purchasing patterns in other material categories. <coughs> Library operating expenses are $11,000 under budget uh, for the month and 42,000 under budget for the year. General administrative, <coughs> uh, 5,400 under budget uh, for the month and uh, 48,000 uh, year to date. Uh, employee fringe benefits are $1,100 under budget for the month and 24,000 under budget for the year. Uh, utilities uh, is uh, $1,600 under budget for the month and uh, $3,300 for the year. And uh, the net surplus uh, or deficit for the month, that deficit is thirty-eight. I'm sorry, three hundred eighty thousand dollars, which is one hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars favorable to the budgeted deficit of five hundred eighteen, and uh, forty-nine. Uh, I'm sorry, four hundred eighty thousand dollars favorable year to date. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Can you? Um, I just missed what you said was eliminated by switching from landscape to portrait. Um, and this particular. Uh, there were two columns that were eliminated, um, the annual budget and, uh, the, and the percentage uh, spent of that budget. I felt that, uh, and, I, and I 
did send these to uh, Tim beforehand and, uh, uh, to see what his thoughts were on this, but I thought that the six column presentation was straightforward enough to show we, where we were here today, uh, budgetarily and uh, monthly. So is the annual budget redundant with year-to-date budget? No. Uh, the year-to-date uh, budget reflects um, the budget as it would be expended uh, through January 31st in the annual budget uh, has an additional five months of uh, planned expenditures. So then as we're looking at this, we can't figure out that we're at 48,000. I'm sorry, which number are you referring well, to? Well, I'm just saying, if we're looking at a line item, we can't even look to the end of the year to see how much we have left to see where we are in terms of being above or below. So where do I go to see my year budget? If year-to-date actual, how about for the entire year? Well, I mean, year it gives you an idea. But there's year-to-date actual expenditures and year-to-date budget. But I want the annual budget. It does not appear on this page. And it doesn't appear on which page is that? It does not appear on page 10 or page 11. It's called the income statement page, consolidated. Page 12 or page 13. So it's which report? The income statement consolidated. Is the only one that doesn't have the annual figures. Is that correct? Uh, the annual figures appear nowhere in this in this package. Okay, the annual figures were removed from this report when you switched to portrait. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, that's what I meant. So if I wanted to look at the annual amount, where would I go? Um, you would go to the uh, budget appropriations uh, ordinance, which. Uh, which is on the uh, uh, website under the FOIA tab. Is there a reason why we needed to make this change? Mm -hmm. It was just legibility. legibility but what was so hard about reading it the way it's been all these years? I think we would like to know where we are in terms of our annual budget all the time. I mean, I'm trying to understand the purpose. What was? What, what is it that we needed? Well, we had three reports that were all very similar so that part of it was just consolidating it down to one report because people got so confused between the different ones and they were really very similar to each other so this puts everything all together and then it, it just seems a little bit cleaner it puts it in the same direction as many of our other reports it's just from an accounting standpoint you always need to know what your annual is and i'm concerned that so many people are becoming confused by these reports they, these are standard reports we've had them for years but it's important to know in June and February where you are. Sure. So well, that's why I would prefer to well, stay it was, the way it, it was. It was an experiment, so you're expressing your opinion, and that is fine. If the rest of the board feels the same way, then certainly we can change it back. It was just an experiment to see what would be better. We're not trying to hide anything, certainly. Oh, no, you're just removing the annual figures, and now I have to go online and find them. It's, I would rather not need to do that. Okay, well, I have no objection. Okay, I, did have, I don't have, I don't have an objection to put it back either. I mean, even if there's one of us that would like it, I think sure. it should go back. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. I mean, what does anybody else have an opinion on that? I think it's fair. It's fine. So if that is okay, Craig, just to put it back. Yeah. Just a little and then is this a time for me to ask you another question about um, where it's about where in the budget um, did we? Um, place the 800000 or 800000 or something for the levy increase, what budget line items received those dollars? So we, we had to put them somewhere in our budget, right? We just passed the levy increase. Mm -hmm. We had already drafted the budget prior to that. Okay. So you won't see any budget expenditures relative well, to that. Not expenditures. Where is the budget amount located? Because we were supposed to use this money for certain, we had we earmarked it for some expansion, expand, uh, expansion on the northeast corner. So did we pick a line item to appropriate mm -hmm. that money? So the budget was passed in August before the levy was passed in November. Mm -hmm. The levy won't won't start to be collected until February, which is the last four months of this fiscal year. And you won't have a budgetary line item or line items relative to the increase in the levy until next year's budget. 
So where did we plan uh, placing those figures? Because I thought it raised this year's budget. This budget was passed in August before the levy was passed. So we raised this for next year's budget, 16 and 17. Right. Have we decided where we're going to allocate those dollars? No. no. We just started the budget process now. But I thought the purpose of the levy was specific. I don't, I don't have any. I, I, no, there, were, there, just, there were just reasons, reasons that we were bringing up why we wanted to increase the so the reasons we wanted to increase the levy aren't the reasons we're going to increase the budget line items. When we talk about the budget, then we'll be talking about the line items when we discuss the budget. So just so I can clarify, the reason we raised the levy is not what we told the taxpayers. We're going to decide, or we're going to use this money when you review your budget for next year. I thought it was three specific reasons. Those were ideas that we all had. We all brought different ideas to the table. I think mean, there were specific reasons. They were, everyone was talking about them. They were in the paper. So now those aren't the three reasons. What else could we possibly be thinking? Well, Carolyn, from my point of view, we had shown that if we didn't raise the level, we were going to go for the red within so many years. <clears throat> so from my understanding, that's why I voted to raise the level, so that we didn't go into the red. And that was overall expenditures uh, throughout our entire budget. So when we look at the budget in the fall, in the spring, that's where we'll start reflecting that additional budget amount. That's after, my understanding. After I saw Rick's presentation, uh, that's what I voted for the, for the increase in levy as well, because it really showed that if we didn't make a move now, we'd be in trouble down the line. Big trouble. Well, that's, that's the next budgetary process. Okay. All right, well, at least I'm clear now, because I was looking for it in different line items, and I just wanted to clarify. So we don't know where we're going to use that. Okay, well, that takes care of that question. Um, and I think my other two will probably have to wait for other. Um, they have to do with an expense, but they're based on an email I received, so I guess we can talk about that later. Okay. Um, well, if it's an expense that we're paying this month, it should be addressed. Actually, it's an overall expense, and it, 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 it's actually based on your email um, that I received regarding me. And I thought it was a good point, I wanted to bring it up. Um, it was an email from you regarding me. <coughs> I guess the amount that Coca-Cola or it was right. determined. The PTAP, yeah, that yes, is. Yeah, I was now. going to bring that up in my uh, oh, okay. support. Well, you know what, I, I can certainly bring this part of it up at that point. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, then, um, if we can mm -hmm. make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for operating expenses of $151,366.12. Payroll expenses of $273,768.02. Special reserve expenses of zero for total monthly expense of $425,134.14. So moved. Part. Second. Tim? Any discussion? Okay, please take a roll. Uh, Carolyn? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. um, first of all, I just wanted to thank the board for allowing us to um, have our staff in service. Uh, as you see from my report, it was a huge success. We had two absolutely wonderful speakers. I want to encourage you, if you run into Tony Mullen back anywhere, tell him thank you, because he did a wonderful job. And the work that they over do over there is just really very impressive. Um, I saw him right before, the day before I came to your event, and he was all fired up. Over. He is so positive. He's just, and the staff absolutely loved him and felt very reassured that this was, these were people they could feel safe calling to get help for patrons that sometimes need it. And so, really, that was great. And then the, um, the second pres presenter was also absolutely wonderful, talking about trends in society, and he did a fantastic job, too. Um, and we'll probably be talking more about some of the things he had to say when we're doing our strategic planning because he had some really interesting ideas. 
Um, I wanted to make sure that you noticed that Donna Block has gotten us another grant for summer reading interns, which um, she doesn't get it every year, but she tries for it every year, and she got it again this year. So we will be hiring a couple of high schoolers to get a little bit of first job experience and give us a hand on our summer reading program. Um, and they try to give them a whole variety of tasks to do so that it's a really valid work experience for them. And so it's definitely one of those win-win things. So we really appreciate Donna doing that. That's just summer. That is, yeah, for summer in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to explain a little bit more about the change that's being made to um, our settings in CCS. Um, if you'll recall, those of you that were here a long time ago, there was a point where they were trying very hard to cut the van traffic because um, it, was got, it had gotten so expensive and um, it was starting to look like we might have to start paying our own van delivery charges for like when like somebody here put something on hold and it comes from another library. It was looking like we were going to have to pick that up ourselves. And so, um, so CCS made uh, a change so that um, any item that we owned had to come from this library. So, they, so somebody would just have to wait. If somebody wanted a copy of Charlotte's Web and all of our copies were out, they couldn't get a copy at Des Plaines even if it was sitting right there on the shelf. They had to wait for our copy. So then a few months ago, they changed it so that um, after 30 days, they flipped over to be, being a system hold so that now the, the copy from Des Plaines can come over here. And now in March, they, uh, that didn't really affect our delivery traffic very much. And it is getting our things to the patrons faster. So now they are changing it so that um, all of the holds are going to be system holds. So you will get the first copy of whatever it is wherever it, it is. And they have um, some switch that they're going to flip that um, tries to help with the problem of you get it from another library, it's on the truck, and our copy comes back. They're going to try to set it up so that there's a minim minimal amount of that going on. And then we're going to assess it again in six months. So any comments that you hear from people about this, I will be very interested to get that feedback so that I can give them genuine feedback in six months. So it's a little bit complicated, but um, I think it's basically probably a good idea. People and sharing the collections more is always a good thing. Actually, just personal, I put a book on hold and I had gotten it. I thought I was going to wait for a while because we didn't have it here. And I had, it was an email within like three days, yeah, which yeah. is pretty quick. Yes. I wasn't, I was figuring like a week or two right. or three. Right. Who knows? Yep. You know, it's but very efficient. It was really but, quick. Yeah. But if we had had it, you'd have been waiting for our copy to come uh, back for 30 days and then they would have gotten it. So that's, that's what the change is, to just get the things yeah. into the people's hands as fast as possible. Um, as I emailed you all, we did have to um, make a decision very, very, you had to make a decision very quickly about the PTAB um, Coca-Cola protest back in 2010. And um, we literally did not have any time to give you information about it. So uh, the, the Dennis's firm made a strong recommendation that we go ahead and settle, and so that was what we told them to do. And then she is supposed to be sending us a list of every other PTAB appeal that's in process right now, so that at least you'll know what else is on the table. Um, and then we also wanted to find out if there was something that will affect the next three years of Coke's uh, tax um, assessment as well. Is, so, is that a normal thing that happens throughout the year? It does happen year? quite a lot, yes. Yeah, anytime. They're, they're more powerful than we are. But I have one question about the process. Could we have not been notified and you could have gotten our opinions instead of just having only the um, president decide on this? Shouldn't this have been something that we all should have been uh, yeah, aware absolutely. of? Absolutely, but, but there was just no time. But in the past, case. we've gotten phone calls, text messages, and we were all able to say, you know, we're in agreement. But we were even included, and I'm not sure if our technology is getting slower, but this year seems to be very difficult for getting a phone call from anyone. Everything's email, email, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really frequent my library email during the day. Mm -hmm. But I did think that we all should have been contacted, and it's a matter of minutes to text all of us or call us by cell, we've done it before. We've well, personally, when we saw that even if we had fought it, we would have lost, I was okay with what you guys made the decision. You know, it would have been losing battle anyway, so what's the point of calling everyone? Because we were For a board. one second. 
Yeah, well, I, I, I agree, no, I think we all you know, should have had a chance to talk about it and decide that. Dennis, can you tell us why, why don't we know about this sooner? Why don't we hear about this sooner? Because usually we have a little time to decide. Yeah, speak this is this. an aberration. The first time it's happened to Mallory in her career, and hopefully it will be the last time. The way I understand it was that there was a disconnect between the school district attorney and her as to um, uh, when the settlement would take place, discussions would take place, and or the child would take place. And apparently there was a pre-trial conference where all these settlement discussions take place on PTABs, and there was a decision uh, to try and settle the case for the amount, which we didn't know anything about and didn't participate in. And rarely it was then found out about it from the school district's attorney, and as soon as, because we had to get decided, uh, by a day certain, I don't know, that's what she said to you. But when that happened, she called Greg and Susan right away and said, sorry for the late notice, but this is the process that happened, and it has never happened before, and hopefully it will never happen again. So I think it was just a disconnect on the school district attorney as to whether or not she was aware of the proposed settlement. So is the school district attorney taking the lead on this case because they have the most dollars at stake yeah. and we just sort of Well, the what, what happens is anything? the library and the schools um, agree to share the costs, like the appraisal costs, okay. and then they pay their own attorneys, basically. But the school district by far has more money at risk than the library does. And so they had decided to settle, is that correct? Correct. correct. Uh, right. There was just a question of whether we wanted to, we wanted to go ahead and we had agree. to pay the full freight of uh, defending that action ourselves. I understand that, but uh, we hope, and as you say, will be the case. We'll get more notice in oh, yes. front of Because Carolyn's right, we all should have a chance to discuss No question. That. And you yeah. usually do. Yeah, and, and we no, have. And the ones going forward, we have you'll the have, you know, months, at least a month. Yeah. Okay. So just for clarification, your firm did represent us in this? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. So, oh, I understand now. So you were kind of caught off guard, and so that's why we were caught off guard. Is that why the late Correct. We didn't get saying? notice of what was happening until the day that we literally called Susan and Greg. What should, she, what should she do in the future so it doesn't happen again? I mean, do we sit back and wait for people to call us, or do we No, arrange? no, no. It's, it, the the pre-trial conference, the way I understand it, got rescheduled without giving notice to her. But uh, wouldn't she follow up on that? Usually attorneys follow up on that. Well, usually case. you get notice from the administrative law judge and or the other side as to when the pre-trial conference was. That didn't happen this time, so I can't explain why. But it, like I said, it's the first and only time it's ever happened. Uh, I think it's very unlikely it'll ever happen again, but she is more than aware of what happened and will not let it happen again. I see. Okay. But it's not it wasn't really her fault. It was just she didn't, there was a disconnect between, like I said, the other parties and nobody they failed to send her the notice that she's legally entitled to get. When you file things in court and whatever you obligate to give the other side notice and you said who is going to be giving you the list then in advance? Mallory. 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 Yeah, Mallory. Okay. Okay. There's only like five left. Okay. So it's the That's taxpayers the here and they had anybody who they paid tax money to since they didn't make as much money as they had proposed that they were going to make, then they get tax money back. Is that basically the gist of it? No, it's a challenge on, it's basically a challenge on the assessment for mostly, okay. mostly commercial, uh, when we get involved, it's okay. mostly commercial enterprises like Coca-Cola and or Target and or Best Buy, they will challenge the assessments and there's a process that you follow okay. to make that challenge and the bottom line is they don't want to pay as much taxes as we believe that they're otherwise required to pay under the law and so they challenge that and that we uh, if it's worth it to the library. Oh, okay, um, so it's based on their property assessment, yes. not their what the money that they made and Correct. then they pay it for. Okay, yes, I, got, okay. Like okay. I got Okay, I got you. Okay. Got you. Okay. okay. It's just like if we were challenged our assessment. I got it. Exactly, but at a much higher rate. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. Much, more more, more, much more dollars at risk. Yeah. So in these cases, is the school district usually the one that represents or, or goes to trial about this? 
Well, well whoever intervenes, support. whatever public, whatever governmental body, taxing body, is impacted by the by the PTAP um, complaint, has an opportunity to intervene in that cost. The school district does on a regular basis because they're a very high taxing body. The library does when the money at risk is worth going to battle over. Sure. And Coca-Cola was one of them. Sure. Uh, Best Buys is one of them. Target's one of them. There's, sure. you know, not all of them are worth it, the, the money to spend to fight it. Sure. Like if a, a homeowner. Correct. Usually it's, it's, right. 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 Okay. it's not worth it. And then so, the so library and the, and the school district shares and the, because the evidence you have is the appraisal of the property. Uh -huh. Right. So the, you need to have an expert and we share those types of costs. So so when a, a uh, somebody who's disputing their amount it's 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 uh, it goes their way, do we get a bill from the state or something? How does that work? When, when it impacts say, future. It impacts your future tax. All the future tax. Yeah. You don't write a check. They don't go backwards. The retroactive. You just don't get it. You don't get future. money. <laughs> yeah, you, don't, well, you don't have to. You know, okay. nobody's writing a check. Okay. It impacts your next tax. Gotcha. So this is 2010 that you're talking about. So it'll change the assessment for 2010, and then that'll roll forward to 2011, 2012. Um, because you, you've, gone, you've gone back in time and sure, lowered the sure. assessment, so it wouldn't just be lowered for one year. Or yeah, sure, I understand, but, but we already received the money for that assessment. If they lowered the assessment, then so now, we owe money back. Then. Yeah, so now um, we're going to start collecting money on the uh, 2015 tax levy, and that will appear as a refund item for, for those years. Oh, okay, and so uh, I gotcha. I. I I think we calculated, you know, total impact is something around thirty thousand dollars or something like that. And uh, as they get those refunds, the county will then portion those refunds out to the taxing bodies that, you know, that are impacted. Okay. And then they'll probably go ahead and uh, uh, protest the next, sure. you know, change in the system. They have to go. Yeah, it happens all the time. Most. And um, the reason that I didn't just call everybody, which normally I think I would have if it had been a less complex issue, but trying to explain this over the phone seven times seemed very daunting to me. She sent a follow-up email that was, you know, the one that I did forward to you, and that had all the information, but it would have been really hard to explain all of that to each person, and then ultimately I think everybody would have still said, we're going to go with our lawyer's advice. But so that's not the point. The point is, I think this board is supposed to make decisions mm -hmm. to call us and to let us know that we are now going to be responsible for this debt it was easily understood. What I'm saying is, is it customary that only the president makes that decision? I didn't I think that. I thought the board voted. And I know I've gotten phone calls in the past when there were some very important issues. Just the get my my vote or my opinion or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why we wouldn't do that and why would this be so complex to explain? We, we were what we'll all we are all aware of this process. We we knew it was happening. It just kind of blindsided us and the point to mention was we needed to pay this and we needed to pay it quickly. But I still felt that a phone call is is the least we could have gotten. Well, I know I talked with her, and I also Karen did talk with her too. So because I thought it was care with their position it's too. It's not the point. I understand. Well, we understand your point. However, so you're saying that decisions are not made by this board; they're made by one or no. two of you. Yeah. Well, certainly that is how market functioned. So, uh, you know, this was the first time I bumped into this kind of thing at this level. Did I made Morgan, the call. I'm sorry. What was that comment I missed? Well, Morgan, Morgan. Morgan made many, many unilateral decisions as board president. And, and that's not what we want to do. Is, that's Why not our preference, but if that's not what you want, yeah. and you yeah. want a phone call on something this complicated, I can do that. But it's I not literally, complicated. It's you don't feel so, but it is complicated, it's and it's important. Okay. It's, I think, most people would think that it's fairly complicated. But in any case, I did not intend to be disrespectful to the board. I do see you all in the body, but I didn't see it as a thing that you didn't have time to take a vote, to take a real informed vote. 
so a decision just had to be made. I got the phone call on the evening, and I had to give them the decision the next morning. I think you made a good decision. Let's move on. Um, I also have a letter here from another set of attorneys saying that Bethany Romanian Pentecostal Church has um, applied for property tax exemption, which is not surprising, but just thought I would pass them along since that just made yeah. our way. Uh, 7300 North Natchez right. Avenue. Um, I want to remind you about the um, opening reception for the candy exhibit. We are starting to get very excited about it. We don't have the RSVPs from you, though, so we would really very much like to have your RSVPs. Um, this is a pretty big deal. Um, unfortunately, we are not able to serve alcohol at it because you're going to have candy-infused <laughs> beers. It was going to be kind of fun, but, well, it doesn't sound good exactly, but interesting. But no, um, as it turns out, uh, district libraries are not allowed to serve alcohol, and every time we've done it in the past, it wasn't legal. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Right. I have the town is March 4th, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. Friday, March 4th. Did so the village is yes, at the uh, okay. legislative okay. breakfast. All right. Yeah. So even if you have permission from the village, which we always did, you still can't have it. Uh, so okay. get, no, I said uh, the village invited me because the mayor's cutting the ribbons. Okay. Great. 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 What time is that again? Uh, six thirty. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Six thirty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think that yeah, the ribbon cutting. I think is at seven. Is that right? They have speeches in the mayor's cutting yeah. the ribbon to what? The candy exhibit. Oh. It's a VIP party. party. It's a big yeah, deal. Yeah, well, well, I mean, well, the mayor cut. Well, I don't. I don't know exactly yeah, how the mayor. I want you to run up there and cut that ribbon first. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure I will be helping. That's how it was. It's the green exhibit. We all have ours. Um, I also wanted to mention that Sasha has been doing an awesome job as head of marketing, and he. Um, talked with the journal, and the journal is going to be a media sponsor for this candy exhibit, so we're pretty nice. excited about that, too. Thank you, John. Thank you. And, uh, yes, oh. certainly was. Appreciated that. Um, let's see. Carolyn asked for information about how many of our library cards are given are, are for non-Niles card holders. Piece of paper where I'm going to that. Right. Yeah. No. Like for non library, non library, non district? That are not village of Niles. Are oh, okay. Are so they are okay. okay. So they are, these are district so cards from the unincorporated areas. Niles has 13,327. Unincorporated Displains has 9,132. Unincorporated Glenview has 1,963. And then there are a few other cards that are like the teacher cards and the homebound cards. The homebound cards could be either district or not, if I can't, not as proper. But anyway, those are, that's the basic breakdown. Okay. It's slightly more Thank are not as proper. Okay. And that is actually thanks, thanks to Cindy. She has been doing an awesome job of getting her on all of the CCS many, many millions of reports that you can look up. So she got that information for us. Can I ask if you, yep. you said 13,000 were for people who lived within the village In the village of Knives. And about 9,000 displays. Yeah. About two, two unincorporated. 2, unincorporated unincorporated, unincorporated displays. Unincorporated Glenview, about 2,000. Is there such a thing as unincorporated Niles? Is it unincorporated no. Niles? No, this all is just Niles. Niles proper. Yeah, oh, all right. Niles okay. is okay. municipal. All right, all right, gotcha. Okay. All right. So each one of these Card holders or families are paying that out of Correct. district. No, no, no. They're they're they are card. They're they are district. in district. I'm sorry. They do pay taxes. The, taxes. They pay taxes. Paying taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Taxes. 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 They don't pay village taxes, but they pay they library taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Okay. So right. all these people are paying the same mm -hmm. rate. They're paying the same rate of taxes. It's just that they. It's almost half and half. I know. Yep. Just about. Because my mom lives on the corporate display, so oh, she sure. pays like her right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what was the discussion about having special cards for the Though library? There are pockets where they don't pay library taxes to any library. And some, a couple of those are very close to schools, and so that's where that Well, I know for my school, we have, um, they take the life skills kids to the library weekly. Mm -hmm. And they had a problem because one of our kids is, in financial need, but they also live in one of those areas. 
So they sell coffee and do things to earn money for that group. They had to pay close to $200 for this to get a library card. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, I don't have more information about the uh, how we would go about forming an intergovernmental agreement, but I have an appointment. Veronda Pitchford from Rails is coming to answer all of our questions at the beginning of March. So uh, actually at the, the day of the candidate visit. So yeah, so should, we will get that ball rolling. But it's again a kind of a complicated topic. So and there are lots of different situations. Okay. Let's see. So the last thing I wanted to do is that. Um, Barbara had suggested that we review what our strategic planning process was last time. So I have a quick review for you here. Let's see. All right. So back in 2010, started in June, the managers were having us throw out the important issues that we saw. And then he laid out a five step process and he was hired by the board in July 2010. Um, his five step process is this data collection based on the census, using talking to focus groups both staff focus groups and outside focus groups, and having an open town hall meeting. The next step is priority setting. Third step is creating your goals based on your priorities. Fourth step is budgeting to meet your priorities and your goals. And the fifth step, communicating back to the community. So that was the all kind of the preliminary stuff. Um, the timeline looked like this. It started in September 2010. Um, in the fall, we were gathering the names of the people who would be, for example, people to invite to a business focus group, people to invite to an educational focus group, things like that. And we also pulled a lot of statistical data during this time. Then um, Dan held the focus groups and conducted surveys in January of 2011. And then we um, had, at the end of February, a one-day uh, off-site retreat at the White Eagle where all of the supervisors um, and all of the trustees were in attendance along with the architect of the previous renovation because um, he had lots of, he had been talking with Linda and he had lots of ideas about what the building needed. Um, and so they, we met and we started the planning process and at this retreat, here is what we did. Dan um, reported back on all the information he had gotten from all the focus groups and from, um, there was a print survey as well. And then he divided everybody up into small groups, and he gave us 18 of the, they're called service priorities. They're basically 18 ways in which a library serves their community. And then we, so we discussed those, and I have those in a minute, but we discussed those, then we came back and we, we each of us had the chance to vote for our top five priorities out of the 18. So these are the Public Library Association service responses are all of these. I won't read them all out loud to you, but you can see that they touch on various topics from genealogy <coughs> to um, citizenship, business resources, creativity, um, literacy, school help. So we had these 18 possible choices, and then you would pick five of them and rank them. So you had your number one choice, your number two choice, and so on. Didn't were you with that? Am I, I'm trying to remember. If that was before your time or right at? Right before or were you there? At the at the retreat. No, I I wasn't. Yeah, I think okay. it was before. It must have been just like was right before. Here, anyone here now? There? Barbara. Oh, and Barbara. Linda. Linda. You two, Linda, right? Yeah. Oh, Linda. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So those are the 18 things. So we all voted. And then, this is the point at which, from my personal perspective, it all went a little bit awry. Instead of picking five of those topics, they took kind of all of the topics and smooshed them together <laughs> into six priorities. So it wasn't very focused, you know, but those ended up being our top priorities, um, which were to have the library be a great, comfortable destination for people to come to, to develop young readers, to develop online services and information literacy, you know, helping people get comfortable with uh, information by a computer, to support uh, school work, kids in school, to promote creativity, and then lastly was to work with our multicultural community. And so for an example of how you would flesh out a priority, here's the destination one. This is just a very short portion of the destination. So these were some of the things that were named on that day as ways that we could help make this a destination. So these were things that we <coughs> looked at. There, it was, the priorities were very, very long. So finally, um, so once we had the, all the priorities and we had that all fleshed out, 
in a lot of detail. Then the staff kind of took over the project at that point and started developing those priorities into points on a strategic plan. Came back to the board in April, then they gave their revisions. May, we, um, we gave them a second draft, and in June, the board approved it. Um, and so it took a full year from the first meeting with the consultant to getting that plan finished. The board, um, at that time, chose not to go through the plan line by line which, as I say, later led to disagreements because people felt like they, you know, because they hadn't gone line by line, but it didn't have their full support. So I would say it's a priority this time to make sure everybody really, really gets a voice on this. And then last of all, they uh, soon put together a little brochure that went around to the community, if you want to take a look, um, that give, gives the different priorities. So it was communicating back to the community what we had decided to work on. So that was basically the process. Um, that we went through last time. And don't, don't you think that using this structure, we can do it without a consultant this time? You know, I had thought so, and now I'm thinking that we can do a lot of it without a consultant. Um, and from what I understand from the other directors, very often they'll hire a consultant and they end up doing the majority of the work themselves anyway. Well, that's but where, where well, the definition yeah. of, a, is a, of a consultant is it's somebody you hire to, to uh, tell you, and then they borrow your watch to tell you what time it is. <laughs> yeah. but and the, then they the, sell you the watch. Yeah. <laughs> the particular piece of this that I, as I think about it, I think it probably would be get to, good to get some help on is the community surveying part. Because if I like am going out and I'm asking people, well, I'm the library director. They're not going to give me a clear information. Plus, I don't have the, the sort of tools for really doing an in-depth survey. And that's the, a piece that I think might be helpful to get help with just that particular part of it. But I just want to... Can I just make a suggestion? I was thinking that that was probably the aspect that you were thinking yeah. about. I was at a community relations meeting, and they are the village is very much interested in doing the same thing, getting out into the community to the areas that we don't reach, yeah. and to come up with some ways to just um, what's the word? Um, like survey them and yeah. see what they're needs. Do you think maybe we could? somehow work with the village with that uh, in mind and maybe if they're going to take it on we'll just well we could definitely find out more about what their process is going to be but they stop at the village border oh, when you go to go there yeah mm -hmm. that's the problem but but I think we certainly can find out and maybe we can piggyback on some of that well, information yeah, but the library service responses are much much different mm -hmm. than the villages well no I meant seeking out surveys in different areas if they were already going to have that set up but I have oh, one question I had a question, though, uh, in regards to the different areas on the um, train of um, As far as, um, oh, yes, yeah, so what was it about those groups? Or, um, you know, every community has its own group. You wanted to target yeah, focus yes. groups? Yeah. Do we have any idea of who the focus groups are, are throughout Niles, like in these different areas? Well, we came up with our own focus groups right. based on yeah. the yes. people that use the library. So it would be like the group of seniors, a group of, there was definitely a business group. There was a group of like the superintendents and the principals okay. and people like that came in. I'm thinking um, culturally and nationality. Oh, yeah. That well, that would be, yeah. Okay. That's so we right. don't know if that already exists. So is that why you needed this consultant? Did he do all this last time? Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. we pulled a lot of the names, but yeah, he conducted all the surveying. And then, and then also analyzed the results of it and came back with um, information of, for us about our community. Right. And so that was like the, the framework for then uh, so thinking going piece. further. I think it's a really yeah. important piece. I think it's really Did key. Who, um, who came up with these survey questions? Did he, yeah. he did, I believe. Yeah. I mean, he worked with us a lot, but I think that he, it was, you know, they were very general questions. You know, what could the library, what what is working well at the library, what could be better, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And that's a piece that I do think we want to look at a little bit more carefully. Yeah, I think we would need to because I think the issue is that we're not bringing in the ethnic groups because we yeah. don't relate to them. And giving them questions that are so bland like that will just get yeah, them further good. away. That's not good. Information. Well, you'll have input then. You'll be working with them. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't have a consultant at this time. Um, it would definitely be... Um, what I wanted to propose to you is, is to consider bringing a consultant in and possibly doing a request for proposals um, and just seeing who is available. There's one in particular that I know they used at Lincolnwood that did mostly just the community survey part. So I thought I, I'm going to talk to her on the phone at least. I, I do, I've not talked to her before, so I don't know anything about her. But 
um, I thought we could at least look at it. How um, much did this run last time, if you recall? <coughs> That's, uh, you know, I think it was, it, it said somewhere that we budgeted $10,000. I want to say too. Yeah. It, I don't it, think it all went to him. About. I think there was a small portion of it that went to printing and things like that, but it was roughly a ten thousand dollar process. But it did take a long time. I think when I was thinking we would, we I was really hoping to get a lot of this done before we did budgeting, and now I can see that it's just not realistic because the time just is going by like this, this, this. So that would be the other nice thing about a consultant is that we keep it kind of moving forward. Sure. No, right, right, right. Way. So, but I I didn't want to do that without consulting you. I just have one other comment. Could we consider a consultant that's worked in an area that is reflective of ours? I mean, I would want him in some from some area that's affluent and all white, and we're oh, yeah, trying yeah. to relate to all these different ethnicities. Yeah. If that's at all possible. Well, I just don't know who is out there, but I can find out. I was going to ask how many consultants that deal with this kind of stuff are out there. Yeah. I mean, that would depend on the survey questions, though, and I yeah. think it should be a general survey. I think, uh, yeah, we'll have to get some of that information by working together with the schools because that's kind of our best access to some of those people. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So, you want to make sure you touch on all the different areas that is. Um, and they're already doing that, or they've already figured out what they need to do. So, so that is all the information I have for you in my director's. And this is to the goal of creating a new strategic. It is, yes, and and then hopefully having it be the kind of plan that we can keep updating as we go rather than having it be like a fixed sure. three years, boom, done, start all over again. That relates to Dave Dabrowski's idea for a new entrance. <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> So, are there any communications? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I thought we were going to go on and say yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. we want to go around then? Or do we want to just right. say aye? No, you should do something. Say aye. Do you want to go around? Do all in favor? Yeah, all in favor. Aye. Aye. There you go. That's what I've done. Sorry, that's what I did. But this did remind me of what you said. Thanks I put my page on while I said I missed one more thing I wanted to follow up on because Tim had asked for something as well and that was he wants information in the statistics about the use of the things in the creative studio so you will now find on page 32 um, that Cindy has added a category for uh, it's called mediated equipment basically the equipment that you have to sign up for um, so you have statistics now on the 3d printer on the large scale poster printer which just got up and running this last month and then the VHS to DVD conversion, which actually has a, a VHS from my little boys in it right now. Ah. I thought I'd try it out for my whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of neat to have stuff that's actually really useful in people's lives. So there's that. And then uh, communications, we had um, very nice comments this month, which I cannot always say. So be sure you read those. Um, yeah, really nice compliments. You are a wonderful gift to our students. Uh, this is one of them. We had a thank you note from um, the person from the village that was organizing the seed sorting activity for the rain garden that they did here. We have a nice uh, email from the Niles Park District for this uh, preschool who came and visited. And then one more. It was just uh, somebody took the time to write about how nice one of the employees was and, and how uh, nice the library looks. So I just wanted to call those to your attention. Browns. Yes. So I uh, went to two meetings at the village. Uh, the village, um, somebody here suggested it might have been Jeanette uh, uh, that she had heard that uh, the village was working on a comprehensive signage program and it can't turn out to be a, a, a fact. So I was invited by uh, Ross Clicker uh, to, to come to those meetings and I've been to two now. And I was very happy to find out that they're taking uh, directional signage that uh, what their signage on directional sign their directional signage includes the library so that's a big load off of us right? yes so all we're going to have to do is come up with the monumental signs one maybe two 
but as far as directional signage, it's already included in their comprehensive plan. And I emailed the, um, they, they came up with five proposals for designs of the village-wide uh, signage, um, five different families, they call it, and I emailed those to uh, Linda and other, other uh, people here. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what they're doing, and it, it's quite a nice project. It's quite a comprehensive project. It's overall, it's going to cost a million, over a million dollars in the end. It's going to be done on a, in phases, though. It's not going to be done all at once. But the good news is that the library is included in the directional signage. Yeah, I am I know static it, about that. It had, it had come up at, at one of these meetings that, well, we couldn't put signs on the roadway here because um, it's a state highway. Well, the village, because it's the village, they can do that. <laughs> How nice. And the library is on the signs. Very nice. So, and really nice looking signs. What are they going to look like? She says, well, you can pick if you go on the village website. For the direction. So what it's going to be is, it clarifies that the village can do that. Yeah. 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 So what it's going to be is to clarify it. You'll have your posts, and it may have the one direction, village this way, library that way. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the in a price. So they're just going to yeah, point, so center. you're going the right. No, if you're on the street, right. it's telling you how to get to the village or how to get to, so, let's say, open the right. wall, yeah, it's that um, way. Yeah, it's so. kind of like where it says bike path, you know, this right. way. Right. <laughs> so those will be on Oakton and Waukegan? They're going to put them on the main, right. both, yeah. both streets. Right. If you go on the village website, they're asking for people to decide which one they like better. Cool. So somehow or other now, all of a sudden, I'm a part of the committee. So <laughs> the next meeting is the 16th of March, and I'll let I'm going to go into that because I'm going to follow up on her because we're on that. Very nice. We get actually approach the state to try to get, you know, the brown yeah. point of interest yeah, sites, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, we thought that would be a no-brainer, right. um, but they, they, said no. they said no, and uh, well, the reason they said no was because they didn't put those on state highways, oh, well, the or uh, they wouldn't put them on state highways because we were already on two state highways, we had frontage on those highways, so it should be obvious, intuitively obvious to the most casual observer that the library is right there, <laughs> um, but apparently not. Thank you. Well, Barbara, thank you for doing that. Yeah, I think that's for going. That's the way he's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been in other towns where they have those signs up there. So as a follow-up to that, I, now talking to Susan, you said that, now, let me step back a little bit. The park district has their own signs. They're not going to be included in this village okay. program because they have their own signs with their own uh, brand on there. Yeah. And you said that the, the library wants to have their own brand too. Yeah. Because I had suggested that well maybe we should contact this Lakota group, the signage consultant, and ask them to just do the monumental signs since they've already done all this work. How much could it cost us to, to put up the, the two monumental signs? But you said that you'd rather have the library's own brand on the same, which makes sense. I think it's pretty important to maintain yeah. our distinct identity. Yeah. Still, yeah. at this point, maybe we should but ask maybe them to start them. working on the vinyl, uh, give us a proposal for the vinyl on the same. I don't know if we can just go to them directly or if we have to go up with a, a request for proposals for that. Well, it sounds like we should probably schedule another building in the this meeting, huh? Can we just do that now? Why? Why your fault? Let's just. Is everybody okay with that? If we go, do we have to go for a re, we have to issue a request for proposals, or can we just go to the Lakota Group, which is the the company working for the village? I don't think you would have to unless it was over a certain amount, right? Yeah, over twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Oh. Yeah. So. Do you think it will be? No. Do you think it will be less than twenty thousand? Policy. Well, uh, the, the policy says that we have to go out for a formal bid, you know, with an RFP and right. formal bid opening is a, for something we anticipate being over $20,000. Um, um, informally, or the process, or the procedure that we have in place is anything over $5,000, we request uh, multiple bids. So, 
you know, between five and twenty multiple bids, uh, less formal than you know than I'm more of an RFP process between five and twenty, and after twenty, the for more formal bid process. Yeah, with the formal bid opening and you know inviting folks to do that. So, so what are we going to do? So okay. The answer is how to choose it. <laughs> you need to ask questions. But, but, yeah, but, the okay, answer is, I'll tell you what. I'll call up this guy from the quota group and ask him about how much you would need. Okay. Right. And then we'll go from there. What do you think, like But what do we even ask? Like, what signage are we even looking at? Um, well, just okay. two okay. sides. So whoever suggested that monumental signs, those are those big, you know, monumental. Did you look at the package I sent you? Yeah. Okay, okay. you saw what the monumental signs Those like? ones that, yeah, like, are on the brick? Right. Mm -hmm. right. All the right. 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 Okay. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. And we would put those wherever they, yeah, wherever we want them. So we were talking about well, two, one I opened, and one I walked in. And we're going to be we talking yeah. about having some possibility of some signage on the building itself. I don't think we should do it. You don't think no, so? No, you know no. what? I don't know that we no. should either. If we have monuments, signs, yeah. right? Right. right. Mm. We've got the new the LED sign out there, too. My gosh, how can you miss that? You know? Well, if you come in this back door. Yes. You know, that's where they're in the <laughs> signage and all that tells you you're on library property. Right. That's yeah, yeah. where it's been commented on. Okay. <coughs> Move on. All right, so friends of the library. Oh yes, we had a meeting February eighth, and let's see, we'll cover a few things. Well, District sixty three thanked the friends of the library for their check they received to offset the cost of battle the books. Um, <coughs> is it Peter Gurino? Um, Shakespeare future dates have been already decided and um, the Friends of the Library decided to go ahead and pay for next year's um, whatever that event is. I forgot what it's termed, but I think it was $3,400. Um, Chris Tanusiak reminded us that the reason, I guess, Friends of the Library were originally formulated was um, to bring literacy and reading to the young people. That we should promote cultural and ethnic attendance and we should reach out to the neighborhoods, which seems to be the theme everywhere. <coughs> Cindy Rademacher mentioned that she was working on a um, June celebration in the area of Dee Park and um, she's thinking of a band or some sort of performance. We all sort of talked about that and made some suggestions that maybe there's something that village could offset costs or if there's something we can do with involving other people who may perform at no charge that would cost us less but it was really just a, a huge conversation at, at that point but she is planning on the celebration and um, I think that's all, it. that's all I have. Do you have any other points? I think that the friends are going to sit um, at tables um, during the first weekend of the candy exhibit to try to get more friends. And that was how that whole discussion came up, is one of them said, what, what would we say? What do the friends do? Yes, so, yes. They talk about it. And if you're right. planning um, at Deep Park, talk to John Jacket because he's the director of the Deep Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what were the dates for the candy exhibit? It, it, the soft rollout is beginning March 1st, but the party is on March 4th, and the weekend is the 5th and 6th. And they want us there, the 5th. They want friends of the library there, the 5th yeah. and the 6th. So the friends want to do that, they're more than welcome. Okay, good. All right, legislative. Later, the, um, some of us attended the um, Legislative breakfast that ILA puts on. It started out just being the one for the North Shore, and now it has right, the whole staff. Now it has um, expanded to be five locations where different representatives and senators and people like that come, um, and we get an update from the lobbyist um, from the Illinois Library Association and the State Library, um, and he tells us what bills are coming up. You'll notice on this, this is a two-page document basically where. Sorry, one page of it is um, items that are on Illinois legislative 
uh, docket, and the other, the second page is the U.S. issues that are coming up, and then the third page is just advocacy tips because it is actually part of the job of a trustee to advocate for libraries and library funding. So the particular bills here, the one that he pointed out as a fan favorite is a one that there's a bill for um, moving forward to um, give public library districts the same flexibility as municipal libraries to have library fundraising, cultural, and educational events where alcoholic beverages may be served. So he said that was a fan favorite. And certainly we would agree with that. So I, I just thought you would be interested to see that. Rails. Uh, like I said, Veranda is coming out from Rails. Uh, that's pretty good for that. Okay, and there's no secretary's report. So, I'm sorry. So can we go back to this real quick? So how would we go about supporting this house bill? What what would you like us to You would answer? contact your representative, yes. And that was one of the things that was kind of complicated about this breakfast is there are so many different representatives for the for Niles has different rep representatives. You put the district ones on top of it, and it's kind of ridiculous. There are like five of them. But, but we managed to talk with, I think, three, so that was good. So the library incorporates five different representatives? I believe so, yes. <laughs> so if you got us, do you have a list of those people? Um, I can get you a list of those people. Cindy was working on one, um, but, but it would kind of depend. It would probably be most effective for you to contact your own representative. And then you can say, I am both a voter in your district and a member of the Niles Public Library District, and I support this bill. That was what they said, was to use your own. Hmm. Okay. It would seem to me that as a board, if we sent the letter to you. Well, if you wanted to do that, then certainly we could hit all of them. Yeah, it's Ms. McCullough, it's um, Nico. Nico, right? So it's good. And, um, that Chris has a teeny tiny bit up in the very top. So yeah, we can get you that information. That sure, great. that would be great. Right. Okay, uh, the next item on the business, on the uh, is new business, and I'll entertain a motion to approve item A, the expenditure of special reserve funds in the amount of $17,900 to Sherman Dodge for the purchase of a 2016 Dodge Grand Caravan. So moved. Sir? Sir. Karen? So, Susan, we're going to explain this. We're going to need an amendment to that motion because then this tells us that it cannot be purchased out of special reserve oh, because it's not for the building. Um, and I thought since it, well, it's been part of our strategic, our uh, part of our special reserve plans for several years and to replace the band, because nobody ever noticed at that time that it was not an appropriate thing for that. But it, apparently, it's not, so we're going to need to pay for it out of um, the regular budget. So it needs to be amended to, to just line out the expenditure of special reserve funds. So which means it's not budgeted. It's not budgeted, so it will, you will go over in one area. So yeah. It's, Can I just how many miles are on the old one? Twenty-eight thousand. Uh huh. Twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. That's all. That's all. Why are we buying the new one? Well, it's eight years old, and we um, had wanted. If you recall, it's just a plain white van with little green letters on the side, and we want to shrink wrap it. And we thought it didn't make a lot of sense to put a lot of money into an eight-year-old van. So he got a great price on it. Uh, the 179 is a really excellent price to buy a new van, but you know, if you decide that you don't want to replace the van, we'll just rip wrap the old one. But you know, again, that'll be so. Is this van cost, costing us repairs? The 28,000, do we use the thing? My car is coming online. Yeah, well, it doesn't, it doesn't ever go get like go distances, it drives around miles all the time. Yeah. It's going, yeah. like, going to the homebound deliveries and the schools and the retirement centers. So yeah, you don't put a lot of miles on that way, but it's a lot of slow city stuff and go driving. I was saying my car is eight years old and I got thirty-two thousand. Oh wow. My car's on my car's eighteen years old. I got sixty-two thousand. Do we just do the good of the metals? Yeah. Um so so would the old van then we would sell it? Do we have a car max kind of idea what that might be worth? 
any idea? We can get it. Because that would obviously offset that set. Yeah, of course. Offset it. So what are the perks with this new vehicle? How often do we use it? Um, well, it's used daily. Oh, okay. they, they go around. The, that's what the outreach department uses it to deliver materials to the homebound, and then they go to the nursing homes, and then they also deliver things to schools on Fridays and to the preschools. It would be easier to wrap the door in because it's, there's no potholes, no dents and scratches and things like that. And moldings and things have to be taken off the old man as well to wrap it. Or you can get the new plain, it's easier to wrap it in terms of cheaper investment. So the whole point is really to get a van is the wrapping. Okay. So that's what's driving the store. Because it would be for marketing, the library. You know, it's out delivering, it's all, all over the district, and it looks like a utility built vehicle. It doesn't look like anything at all. So how long is this price with the mm -hmm. Joey we pay him? Well, I, I told him we'd probably give him the idea when we should look to get it by the end, probably in the next week or so. That is a great price. Could they could they wrap it? How long does that last? They're not going to do it ever over or something? No, basically it, it's in the garage. I mean, as long as we don't ding it, then it will last forever. You can have it peeled off. Sure. Like that. Well, all this is glue. Is the wrapping additional? Yeah. That's that more capital funds. That 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 was part of the capital grant last year was working. So the van isn't really usable. Is that the problem, or we just can't yeah. shrink wrap it? Well, well, we could. It's just that it, it's an eight-year-old van, so it's a lot of expense to design something and then have it apply, and then two years later we decide we need a new one. That just seemed like the practical thing to do. Oh, I see. Seventeen grand is a darn good price. Wow. I mean, if you get another six or seven thousand for the old one, I mean, you probably get that much more than you can see. So you're no, it's, it's, it's almost a steal, dear yeah. Lord. But does this van come with anything that will help us with all these deliveries and books? And does it come with anything we can use or no? Like racks or something or whatever? Inside? Well, inside it's everything just folds down. It's like oh, so it's all convenient. of it's a dot, maybe on its convenience, everything folds down. You don't have to worry about taking a seat out and putting it away. Oh, it's all underneath, so well, it's bigger. Right. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Because the other one's the same way. It's just that, you know, everything's there. You can sell it as is, you'll get a halfway decent price about it. Yeah. So, library, uh, you know, participates in the Fourth of July program. Yes. So we use right the machine area. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We've already used it a couple of different times because we put a trailer edge on it. Yeah. Right. And we hauled the trailer edge on it. Newfound uses for our shrink wrap. Yes, I guess. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. As soon as we get that legislative thing to allow us to help them, we tailgate. You don't know how to hide alcohol Just, yeah, nothing. Is there any further discussion? Diane, you want to take a roll? Karen. Um, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Jeanette? I was going to say yes on this, but not happy that it wasn't budgeted for 28 dollars I don't know. But it was budgeted for, actually, in the uh, special oh, reserve. Sir. And a special reserve to the reserve fund. But she can't take it out of there to pay for it. No. No, no, no. Oh, it's not no, budgeted no. for. <laughs> yeah, I take your point. Go ahead. Yeah. Barbara? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Ken? Yes. Looks like we'll be a new car smell, right? As long as, yeah. Yeah. As, long as I get the driver. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Dave, just, I mean, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but can you check, like, because you know the specs on it. Mm -hmm. about yeah, we'll, 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 trade we'll look at it. Well, basically, I, I think Greg and I are talking about doing the sealed bid type situation. Oh, you know, nice. That's the highest, highest price. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I've got to where with I can minimum, take it for maintenance. Minimum, that's right. That's right. Well too. Yeah. Very good. That's right. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, we have a motion to approve recommended changes to policy 3.22, the investment policy. Um, so moved. Karen? Second. Okay, great. Uh, can you please explain the changing of the <coughs> Okay, so this seems like it's kind of an esoteric change, uh, but it's uh, an important change that we need to make in order to uh, accommodate the way that we'll be collecting uh, tax uh, receipts in the, uh, in the future. Um, up until uh, last Friday, we collected tax receipts in a <coughs> account at U.S. Bank that was uh, under the uh, Illinois funds, which is through the state treasurer's office. And the beauty of, of this arrangement was that they arranged to have all of these monies collateralized, protected in a sense, um, well, uh, well in excess of $250,000, which is the FDIC insurance. Uh, that provided you know, a, um, uh, a level of security. It also provided a great deal of convenience so that we didn't have to scramble uh, and try to move the money around in order to make sure that, that it was protected or strike our own collateralization agreement with, uh, uh, with the bank. Um, as, of, uh, as of this weekend, they, they moved the funds to Illinois National Bank. Illinois National Bank um, has a different arrangement, essentially uh, such that they will no longer receive third-party deposits. Okay, what's a third-party uh, third wire? What's a third-party wire? A third-party wire is a wire uh, from somebody other than your, yourself in, in your, for the benefit of you, but coming from a third party. So party number one is you, party number two is the bank, Party number three is everybody else. In this case, Cook County making a deposit on our behalf is considered to be a third party wire. I called, uh, I called the Illinois uh, Treasurer's Office and, and talked at length to a representative, and they said, that's exactly right. We will not be accepting uh, county wires. Okay, they will accept state wires. Of course, it's their program, so sales tax and personal property replacement tax and things of that nature uh, will go into, into these accounts, uh, but they will not accept Cook County uh, treasurer uh, distributions. So we had, then we were forced to make our own arrangements. We contacted our bank, um, uh, which is Fifth Third, and what we ended up with is a plan to have the monies uh, wired into our main account, which is our day-to-day -day checking account, mm -hmm. sure. and then transfer excess funds to our brokerage account. Okay. The brokerage uh, account has a, uh, a mutual fund, uh, which is uh, comprised of uh, uh, suitable investments in bonds and things of that nature. Uh, so, you know, we can we can hold all sorts of money in those funds and maybe even make a little bit more money on the investment uh, income line uh, as we draw it down to, uh, uh, to spend it on things like payroll mm -hmm. and things like uh, regular regular expenses. In our policy, it currently says that we require collateralization up to, uh, we, collect, uh, we require collateralization minimally of 110%. And what that means is for every dollar in excess of $250,000 that is being held in this account, what the bank does is it promises to hold, in our interest, a dollar and ten cents worth of their assets. Okay? Um, there is no floor uh, for collateralization in the Illinois Investment Act, which is basically what our policy is based on. And the best that I can negotiate with the bank uh, is 105%. To put it in perspective, Illinois funds through the U.S. bank was only collateralized at 102%. It's 
So 105 is better than what the state can require. And, but less than what we required in our investment policy as it's written. So the change here is to, is to make 110% in our policy 105%. And, uh, and that's basically it. Oh, and, and there was another change to update the FDIC insurance limit. It was stated as 100, at 100,000, it's really 250. It was a change that we should have made earlier. Okay. okay. Um, the plan is, though, not to have a lot of money in this account. And there's two times a year, February and, and August, when property taxes come in. Uh, and we'll just make transfers out, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not carrying, you know, in excess of a million dollars or some ridiculous amount in our checking account, which, you know, uh, I, I'd like to keep that as little as possible. It's only two transactions a year, so that's No, there's two months. Happen. It's several transactions. It's two Isn't months. Really? Yeah, the, uh, we have, uh, I think it's like 10 transactions in that really? time period. Oh, yeah. The, and, and what the county does is they just, you know, they disgorge the funds, they just, you know, as, as they get them. So, you know, think about the people who pay early, the people who pay late, the people who pay at time, oh, okay. you know, and, and every day in between. So we'll get, you know, we'll get uh, transfers as small as $3,500 and transfers as big as $1.2 million. And if you think about it, it's like a bell-shaped curve where as close to the date as possible, we get the most money and then it kind of feathers out, okay. you know, as it ramps up and as it ramps down. And you're comfortable to making this transfer from the checking account to the other? Well, I don't make any transfers. Uh, Who will be doing Oh, you will. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 As long as you're comfortable with it. So do you make a few transfers throughout the month then when it's coming in? Yes, Kathy Tully gives me the information um, for the payroll, for the deferred no, that's not the question she had. Oh, okay. So oh, it's in the account. The plan is, as the money comes in, to transfer it out into the brokerage account. Yes. And then, and then, then what, would be transferred. And then what she was referring to was, as we draw the money down, we draw we draw down specific right. amounts for, payroll. you know, for payroll and, and stuff. We're not we don't take, you know, like a rounded amount. We take an exact amount for that, so it size. <coughs> and uh, uh, I checked this all out. Uh, I spent. Uh, sometime on the phone with uh, uh, Judy Walker, to, you know, make sure that you know she didn't see any holes in the process or anything like that. She's fine with it. Thanks for doing that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. So it's still set up that the FDIC insurance was a hundred grand. Oh my gosh, it was a hundred grand when I was a teller at yeah. sixteen years old. Yeah. <laughs> years ago. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it went up to two fifty, if I'm not mistaken, uh, during the. Uh, uh, crash in 2008. That's what I think. It, I think that's what they did. They wanted to provide some additional level of insurance. Any further discussion? You can take a roll. Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Danette? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. The next agenda item is a discussion of the proposed calendar for our budget process for fiscal year 2016-17. So, Susan? Yeah, we um, thought that it would be good this year to set out a calendar in advance so that we um, all knew what our particular dates were that we were trying to hit and so that you would get a chance to schedule any special meetings that you want to have on the schedule. Um, and. Uh, the other change that we're making this year besides setting up a budget calendar in advance um, and, and we're basing this on the deadlines that Kleinthorpe has set up the calendar for us that tells us what um, what the deadlines are for each thing they have a recommended deadline and then they have the statutory deadline um, and then the other change that we're making is that this year um, in the past the supervisors have just given us budget line items you know they've said you know I need X number of dollars for program things like that this year I'm having them each do a plan for their department where they do a year in review they look back on the previous year they project how they think the rest of the year is going to go and then they make a plan for the future year and as a part of that plan they are giving us line items so um, 
it will be then we're going to take all of that information and put it into a report for you to work with. So they will give us working documents, and we will give you a final uh, document that goes with the line item so that you get a better overall picture of how the library is going to be running and the kinds of things that we're expecting to do in the coming year. And I think it's just a better management practice for them to be thinking things a little bit through a little bit more detail and looking at the data from the previous year when they're making their plans. So Greg is going to handle the rest of this. She stole my presentation. <coughs> There's nothing left. Oh, you can go. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if you look at uh, prior year's uh, calendars, uh, the initial presentation of the budget was made uh, to the board in May. Uh, the te tentative uh, ordinance was passed uh, in June for uh, the 2014-15 uh, budget and July for the 2015-16 budget. It was a public hearing and final passage both in August. Okay. Uh, so for this year, for the 16-17 budget calendar, uh, obviously we're presenting the proposed calendar for uh, uh, this evening uh, on the 17th. Uh, we plan to make the initial presentation to the board on April 20th, at which time we'll also uh, pass the tentative budget ordinance. Uh, and the, the important thing about uh, passing the uh, tentative budget ordinance is that it allows us to uh, actually uh, announce a, uh, uh, the public hearing, which we are planning for on, on June 15th. Um, after the initial presentation to the board on April 20th, we put in a, a special meeting uh, to review budget line items for April 27th. Uh, these, they're all Wednesdays. These are all Wednesdays. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it's, this is a proposal, so you know, any of these dates are flexible. And then we have the public hearing and the final passage of the budget by June 15th. So this accomplishes uh, a couple of things. The pros is that we have a budget that, uh, before the start of the fiscal year, okay, which was something that was brought up during uh, uh, the last few months. And it also includes a special meeting to discuss line items and make potential adjustments. Uh, the cons are that the budget will be completed and passed before the final numbers for the prior year are complete. And therefore, the budget will contain more estimates than in the past. So when you pass the budget in August, which is roughly 45 to 50 days after the start of the fiscal year, uh, you have the luxury of having closed out the year and made some final adjustments to the final numbers so that you have a, a better understanding, perhaps, of, of where we stand. Uh, you have real numbers. Yeah. Um, and you also have some rock solid estimates in there for some of the insurances and, and some of the other things that you know come in during the month of, of June, for example, that you know that would affect the following year. Uh, if you can, you know, so this works. I mean, it, it's easy to work with estimates as long as you understand that they're estimates and and that we're trying to come as you know close as possible to what we expect the. Uh, Final numbers to be, and the beauty of uh, the beauty of the library is that so much of our uh, expenses are tied to personnel that those tend to be very predictable. You know, if you you know if you have uh, I'll make up numbers. Uh, if you have a hundred thousand dollars of wages in May, you're going to have a hundred thousand dollars of wages in June, and I'll like it, unless unless there's a fifth week in there somewhere, and then we can adjust for that. Uh, uh, some of the other expenses, such as uh, materials, which is another large line item, uh, uh, we can control in terms of the way that, you know, we, and, and we, and we, do, do, uh, we do go through a lot of uh, effort to, to, to control those numbers very tightly to make sure that we never uh, go beyond, you know, the budgeted uh, line items, uh, you know, when, when possible. Uh, and then, you know, some of the, uh, you know, some of the other things are just necessities. You know, we have heat and light and, and things of that nature. Water, you know, they will be what they will be, but they're not going to vary too wildly. You know, and we know that we'll have to pay them, you know, going forward anyway. So, you know, I, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunity to 
you know, in one sense, compress the, uh, the schedule so that we do have something in place by July 1st, and, uh, and yet expand the schedule you know, so that we're talking about it a month earlier uh, than we had been in the past. We, you know, we're, uh, this contemplates uh, a presentation to the board on April, at the April meeting, as opposed to the May meeting, which was then when it's originally been, uh, been introduced. So, I'll put this back up. <coughs> Well, actually, in order to pass it on time, it looks like you do need to follow this timeline. It, you know, if if you want to pass it <coughs> prior to July first, I think this is this right. is what it looks like. So, um, Dennis, we're not required to pass our budget until months later, but this would have a budget in place before we actually start the year, right? Correct. Stamped by law, we don't have to pass it until the last July. last but, Tuesday of September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, but, but on our schedule, it would be the August meeting, yeah. Yeah, yeah if we did it uh, in accordance with last you know, previous years. So, as you mentioned, we won't have final budget figures to work with when designing the next budget year. What, what month will we be up to, do you think, when you come to, with your initial budget presentation, will you have it's through a, it's, March? Yeah, it's, about? it's a month behind. So, you know, what I've done in the past is, well, about not three quarters of the year, right? Yeah. What I've done in the past is is uh, I've shown actual and then projected, you know, which would be you know the seventy five percent number and then the hundred percent number, you know, just usually based on um, you know just you know just doing the math, taking the numbers and dividing them by seventy five percent to try to figure out what a reasonable uh, annual number would be in the actual. Number. When would the soonest be that we could do the budget with actual numbers? July? Well, uh, uh, you never, uh, Patty, you never look at, you never get to, to look at actual full year numbers on the initial presentation. Well, uh, and you could look at it, you know, you could look at it uh, in July. Uh, that's a little bit soon because you know, generally, uh, as much as we try to make sure that all the approvals are correct during the year, we do go through a process at the end of the year, mm -hmm. you know, to take a backward look. Sure. So, uh, if, you know, if those polished numbers, uh, you know, which are, which are pre-audit numbers, mm -hmm. you know, um, if, those, if those polished numbers are important to have, then I think August is a more, is a more real, reasonable time frame. So either we do it, in, like you say, in June, or we wait two months. You know, I think it's important that we begin our budget year with the budget in place. Um, we aren't the only public entity that has to do this. And, you know, the library, just like many other places, you're pretty systematic. You know what you're doing in June. You know what you're doing in May. Um, I'm sure things can come up, but if we look at our budget and work within it, we should be fine. I mean, in spite of whatever, unless any emergencies pop up. But I think the numbers would be pretty accurate because you look at last year, you consider price increases and maybe some expansions with some of your projects. But I think your figures can still be really, really close. But I think it's important for us to at least impress upon the public that we are going to begin our fiscal year with a budget in place, which is what's usually expected of us, and I don't think it's impossible. Uh, I say that we should try it, see how it works for us. And that gives the board confidence that they've been given enough time to go over the budget as well as everybody wants to. I think that would be a great thing. Yeah. I think it's fine. Uh, you know, and if we do it this year and we decide figure out uh, maybe it wasn't the best, then next year we can go back to the other way. Yeah. I'd agree, let's try it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really great. I appreciate Susan and Clark putting this together because I think it kind of 
um, mirrors everything we've talked about about budget. And I think, you know, for community, for the, all the board members, I think that it's a really great plan if it's thoughtful. And we can always add to it. We can all, you know, sure. if we need any extra, we can always change the dates. So I think it's a good beginning. Mm -hmm. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Do we want to check availability on, the, on April 27th and put and at least get, the, uh, get that in the calendar? Yeah, I was assuming that was part of the eye. Yeah. No, April 27th. Everybody can make April 27th? No, I can make 28th and 27th. But go ahead and do it without me. It's all right. Because I usually have stuff planned every Wednesday. Oh, so you actually, I'm busy that night too. Okay, so we need to find another night. Well, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> See, good thing we yeah, have supervision. I have to do that. Yeah. How about the 28th? The 28th, okay, for you? Thursday, the 28th. Okay. Take a look at the calendar. I have no life outside oh, of life. Oh, yeah, yeah. The 28th <laughs> is probably better. I have a meeting on the 27th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 28th is probably <laughs> How weird. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 day out of all. Yeah, because yeah. well, yeah, we'll that's, that that's yeah. Oh, God, they just switch those. That's the fourth, off of this meeting. fourth Wednesday. I've got usually two things scheduled. And, and it's not going to be a special board meeting for the budget line. I've never <laughs> Nobody's here. Yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. people are here. Wednesdays are no good for me anymore. So you're going to check it. 428, that's 427. I will check on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is unfinished business. And it's for... Second? Second. For the topic for this month, looking at the language of the section of policy 4.02, appointment under oh, here we go. Uh, deferred compensation for full time employees. Yes, we have been um, continuing its study for the library's retirement <laughs> offering to its full time employees, which began, which began on October 2015 for the next several months. Um, we will have a reoccurring agenda item for the regular monthly meetings of the Board of Trustees under library retirement plan investigation. Under the agenda item, uh, the board plans to review retirement plan options, including the current plan offering and the pension plan offering by the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, among other alternatives which board members and the staff may bring to the attention of the board. The board's intention is to alleviate the library's retirement plan offering so that it is no longer one of the bottom two plans of the area and to aid the library to its mission to provide over the top service to the residents of the Niles Public Library District and its patrons by retaining expert librarians at the district. And the board expects that this will be a vote on a uh, retirement plan offering in time to implement the new retirement plan offering on July 1st, 2016. So if you can just go over this with us, Susan. Or sure. Um, this is the particular thing to focus on tonight is the aspect where we give each full-time member of the staff 7.5 percent of their salary after they've worked here for us for one year and which they have the choice of either depositing into an account or taking a salary so it's just to discuss it there is no potential for voting on this there's no motion on the table it's just to discuss i have a comment about that yeah. I, I really don't here for the idea that if people won't put in this uh, deferred deferred comp that they can take it as additional pay. Personally, I don't I don't like that idea. I know that's the way it's been done, but I don't think it makes sense. I don't know what anybody else thinks. Do you want to? Well, maybe we just go around the table, Patty. I, I mean, know we have a lot of time to think about, but just this I, kind of discussion. When I first heard about it, I thought that sounded kind of hinky. How can you call it a retirement plan when people can take it as their salary? I, I mean, like the whole idea about the deferred income is so that people pay a money to retire on. I mean, they're not going to be moving in with me when they run out of money. 
No, are you sure about that? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's something we don't know. Um, Karen? Um, I have some questions. Um, I, I think you've answered these questions in the past, but perhaps you could refresh our memory on this. Um, our employees now, can you tell us what percentage or what numbers take that 7% is deferred camp? What percentage take it as salary? And what percentage sort of split it up between those, be between deferred camp or salary? Which I think they could do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have 44 full time employees, uh, 18 of those employees. Uh, uh, take all or some portion as uh, as salary. Um, I believe four people take it. Uh, uh, don't take the entire amount as salary. So four of the eighteen. Do both or split it up? Split it. Okay. Well, then you say the eighteen split it up too. No, they take all or part as salary. So fourteen. Oh. So, uh, so let me. So let me, it's fourteen that do all and four that do some. Yeah. Right. That's right. And then the balance uh, put the seven and a half percent or the seven and a half percent plus into sure. the four fifty seven million <laughs> because there's an opportunity to elect additional referrals. Okay. So that's about twenty six. Right? No. Yeah. No. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. Twenty-six and eighteen. Well, actually, okay. So twenty twenty-six put it all, but thirty put all or some. Right. Okay. In, right. Into the fourth. So now just look at three categories. Okay. Twenty-six put it all. Into the first <coughs> Fourteen split, take it all and third, start. Oh yeah. Four split it up. Split. That's correct. Okay. All right. Fair. Now Thanks. in terms of in terms of dollars, uh -huh. uh, we transfer roughly fifteen thousand uh, dollars a month. Uh, we charge this account $15,000 a month. Roughly two thirds of the money, or about $10,000 a month, go, it goes into the uh, uh, 457 account. 5000 goes into salaries. Okay, okay. Now I have a couple more questions. Of course, not. Next one is full time employees. And how many hours do they work to be full time? 30? 37.5. 37.5. So 1,950 per uh, All right. And um, of all our employees, they're all hourly employees with the exception of how many? The supervisors. Salary, supervisors are supervisors are salary and the assistant supervisors are salary. And everybody else is hourly. So there's three get up and argue in favor of us allowing the seven and a half percent to be taken in salary and this man who stood up and said that he was taking seven and a half percent in salary and wanted us to continue to allow it was adamant about it and he said that I'm my own investor he says I'm I can invest my own money and uh, he went on and on about it well he's gone now and the last word I heard from him is that he could no longer afford his house here in the area, and so he had to move out of state. So that's just one story of maybe it's not so good to be your own investor, and maybe he should have planned for retirement because he could no longer afford his house here. Um, 
I said this when I first came on. I said I never heard of being able to take seven and a half percent as salary. I mean, you know you're going to retire. You got a plan for retirement, so I don't like the idea of seven and a half percent. Sure. Um, well, I think if our position is to provide a pension or retirement for the employees, then that is what it should be. Um, I, I agree with Barbara that your your pension or retirement funds shouldn't be considered salary. Um, and I think if we um, continue with the seven and a half percent, then it should all go into um, their four fifty seven. Uh, quite frankly, I agree with that too. The only thing is I would hate to have a burden on these people who are uh, taking it as salary and taking it as splitting. And I, if we could possibly grandfather it in or um, 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 step it so that it's, it's three and a half percent one year, three and a half percent the other year, mm -hmm. or something of that nature, so that it's not such a great hit uh, of the people who are obviously relying upon it as part of their salary. Because that's gets kind of a, 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 a knock um, for these agents. How if they're re you know another argument is if they're if they're depending on it to live on, how the heck are they ever going to retire? Exactly. I, I agree with that mm -hmm. in theory. Uh, in actuality, you know, I don't know. It's how are they going to afford IMRF? Right. That's uh, constant. Yeah, that's a well, whole different question. At this point, we're just saying retirement. It could be the 457. No, but what I'm saying is I that's something you saying. can't change. Well, let's not talk about the yeah. Let's just yeah. talk about right. this. Okay. Right. So yeah, I didn't mean to confuse what I meant. No, yeah. Let's not add to the barrel here. All right. So, all right. So, all right. so, all right. so I think the consensus is that we, I don't know, is, is, it, is the consensus that we don't like the 7 and 8% going to sale? Well, like, well, 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 you know, I asked some questions, but I never got a chance to express my opinion. I have a couple more chips. My opinion is is that it should go for a pension purpose. The call pension should be a pension. And the employees should have an option of taking it uh, as salary. I mean, it seems really inappropriate after one year to give someone essentially a 7.5% raise, raise in addition right. to whatever rate. Yeah, raise. That doesn't make sense. And that's what some people are doing, apparently. If they're just taking the cash right away. That's never what it was intended to be, uh, I don't think, when this was implemented. So I think the, uh, you know, whatever we're paying for uh, pension should, in fact, uh, be an effective pension. And nobody, seems to, nobody, nobody seems to know how or when this was um, implemented. Just, it's kind of a crazy idea. I'm, I'm surprised it was ever implemented. I mean, how can you consider this a retirement plan when people are able to take this yeah. salary? Um, I just have a couple of questions, too. Um, just uh, how many other Illinois libraries allow people to take their <coughs> um, pension money and put it onto their pay? I don't think. I mean, most of them are. I thought that was the answer from before, but I know that there's new board members, so I thought maybe they didn't know. No, no, I did check with Schomburg and Lincolnwood that are the two others that have a system sort of like that. 457, and they don't allow that to be taken as salary. And regardless, it's not appropriate, I think, whether other libraries are doing it. Right, but I mean, that's still a statistic. We're the only one. I mean, I've never heard of that. Oh, I see what you're pointing out. And then my other thing was, and I think this is uh, what we have to look at as trustees, is what that line item is labeled, because what it's labeled is what it should actually go towards. And so what's that line item, line item, line item label? It is labeled for a comp. And on the tax bills, it is labeled pension. So if it's labeled pension and if it's labeled paper account, Dennis, can you help us with that? I mean, if it's labeled that and we're adding well, you it you should use it for the purposes that we budgeted it for, which is a good fact that it's useful. So, okay. I don't know how to put it, but <laughs> um, by doing this, is this actually <laughs> it's just crazy. I have to look at that issue. 
because I mean it's got was done prior to what you know we were here I and mean, it's we didn't put it in place but I really think we need to know that we should go we forward right exactly mm -hmm. that's right and and Tim I, I feel the same way I mean mm -hmm. it's not our go ahead I was just gonna say if, if it seems to be sort of the consensus that we should keep uh, offering the option of taking uh, of allowing employees to take 7.5% or up to that amount of salary. Do we, do we really know oh, that's no, we really don't we need to be oh, that's true. Right. 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 Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. We don't want the bill of hours. It, it yeah, you're okay. Exactly. Thank you for the billable hour lot. <laughs> yeah, <you're okay. laughs> <laughs> I guess I was just kind of going. I agree with you. So my next so what I'm hearing is that we're kind of all in agreement that the, adding the seven and a half percent is kind of a bonus once you're here a year um, that we would like that switched so you know we still have to talk about IMRF and other customers right yeah, customers. yeah. 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 I mean this is all can I just, can I just, just have to talk about IMRF and other possibly custom mm -hmm. uh, retirement plans but in the meantime what do we do about this are we going to act on this now or you can't act on it now no, it's just that no, it's just discussion it's not act on it now but yeah. come up with a proposal should we have a motion mm -hmm. for well i mean this is still i think we're still deciding on everything for july 1st i think this is just our continued discussion on what we as a board want to okay but before we do would, would, is it safe to say that by july or august or september we'll we have dealt with this yeah, and possibly okay. grandfathered people in and stepped it down over a period of time or, or done something. And we're talking about it. I don't want to just kick it around and then it's, and then it's off the table. Well, I'm not well, sure how we can. I'm not sure if we will be able to grandfather. No, I, mean, I think this right. is just. I you're right. I agree with you. We should. No. No. But I sure think that yeah, everyone involved should know, especially the employees, should know how everyone feels and how, and the reason being um, why, so that they have enough time to prepare. But uh, but anyway, I think going around, I think it's all concern, mm -hmm. and I think it's been a concern for a, a while, um, and uh, by no fault of the employees, it was offered, and by no fault of ours, we didn't make the, um, the correction. We didn't, we didn't make the uh, policy either. So just so that now it's on the table, it was discussed, and uh, everyone kind of knows. <laughs> where we stand it sounds like no matter what you decide going forward with respect to IMRF or otherwise the board's feeling is that the um, contribution of seven and a half percent toward salary isn't off the table going forward no matter what and the employees should prepare themselves for that Correct. that's why that's what I'm hearing that's what I'm hearing from them. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, I do you think it's appropriate to let people know this is sort of where the board is having in terms of not letting people take the dollars in salary. But just, again, so employees sort of know, when when would we be thinking about making this change? Because I'm sure, you know, people who are taking the salary want to know, well, when is this change going to occur? When is the I'm earliest it might occur? Assuming July, July 1. 1. Okay, yeah. all right, but okay. It would be up to the board, but that okay. was kind of the presumption. Yeah. I just wanted to... Yeah. Out there. And are we totally taking it off? Or are we talking, like Tim said, possibility of stepping it? Yeah, because be seriously, for some of these people, I don't, you know, it's a huge hit. Well, well uh, when you're thinking, um, taking 70% a lot of it is taxed already. Yeah, I mean, yes, think about that. So you're not really getting the 70%, you're getting more. taxed. We're actually just going to a pension, you're getting the whole amount and then you're getting more. So when you're looking at, I mean, when you're just looking at it, it's not really a true 7.5% that you're gaining, but, but yeah. it is a chunk. In addition. Mm -hmm. It is a chunk. So um, if you're thinking of stepping, you're thinking 5, then really 2.5%. So you know what I mean? It, uh, I think that's still a further discussion, but I just kind of, you know, I think Susan and Craig really want to just kind of get a sense and consensus of where the board uh, felt about. Kind of give the staff members an idea. See, I would be in favor of something like starting July 1st, every new employee that's hired, 7.5% goes into their retirement fund. Possibly 
that the grandfather and other people at say two and a half percent a year or something, so that their normal raises will offset the decrease in that. Just just an idea. Well, I think we still think of what our, our line is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so. And we can change our line now. Nomenclature, so we get the things feel more comfortable. All right. <laughs> Duly noted. Um, all right. So, any further discussion? No all right. Is there any no other? I know, I looked on the um, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do for every man. Um I I do have a a couple of the pre bus drivers were talking that when they come in and I said I'll ask at the meeting if something can be done. But they're saying when they come in off of open court. Okay. Sometimes there's car, you know, going every going this way, that way, down the lane, it makes it difficult for them. Would there be a way when you're coming in off, where are we at? Uh, open Rear. court. Okay. That they, you know, all cars go in this direction and then come around to the front of the building instead of going in the front. You understand what I'm saying? Or no? Well, the cars, the problem is that you can only get in to the front of the building if you have, or if you happen to be going westbound. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are out of luck. No, 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 no. If you come into the lot, like tonight, when I pulled okay. in off of open court, okay, I came, I passed the, I didn't pass the front of the building, I swung around, okay, and then, to, I mean, I didn't park it, but, right, how am I to You took the track, what you want to do is make, make it one the way, way off like, make yes. it one way around the back, I and took the one second left right. instead of the first right. left, and then come around. Oh, and I, I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. Oh, she went, she went full circle. Right. Yeah. Because the free bus driver says they're coming in, there's a car coming this way, that way, and it makes it difficult to look at cars. Okay. So can there be signs or something that all traffic makes, like you said, a full circle, instead of making the first left, because, oh, I see a spot here, and uh -huh. come right in. Yeah. But well, we definitely look at that, so thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a matter of just painting the building in there, right? Yeah. Or you could have to do that or we have an old left turn signal as you yeah. exit the, the lane on the open, <coughs> but some people still try to make a left turn. Yeah. Well, they had the medium, they decided to take a left turn. Is there any other other? Okay. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the middle. Second. Please take a roll. Yes. Yes. Take care of Oh, yes. Jeanette? Yes. What? Yes. Yes. Enthusiastically, yes.